Storm Tracker 9 weather with Chief Meteorologist Dylan Robichaud. Take a look at all of the aftershocks here from that Taiwan earthquake that occurred yesterday, almost exactly 24 hours ago. Uh, we've had aftershocks as high as 6.5, even one that's uh, close to seven here, uh, just recorded within the last 24 hours or so. And uh, again, these are confined to a very tight radius. You can see just to the east of Taiwan. Now this occurred because we had the Philippine plate sliding into the Eurasia plate. And these plates, again, when you're thinking about plate tectonic, think in terms of tens of thousands of years. So again, this is moving west northwest. We're talking about the Philippine plate at about 80 to 90 millimeters per year. And uh, this is actually what we call a convergent plate boundary, AKA a reverse fault. These can cause tsunamis, but we got very lucky with this one. I think the epicenter actually occurred uh, just under land, but it had it been, you know, 20, 30, 40 miles further out to sea, I think at that point we could definitely have seen a tsunami uh, develop from this. Now, a magnitude eight, on average, these occur about every 18 years. I mean, these are very, very large earthquakes. So when you're thinking about earthquakes, again, it's an exponential curvature. So a magnitude 7.4 earthquake is about 32 times stronger than a magnitude six. So again, you can see the curvature here. And then as we go up towards uh, a magnitude eight, that's about a thousand times stronger than a magnitude seven. So that's an important thing to realize when we're talking about the Richter scale. Uh, here at home, Man, we are seeing these showers move in across the region today. All these raindrops on the camera are looking really pretty out there. Uh, but you know what? As we go into the next few days, the showers continue. Long term, though, things are looking drier. 48 degrees out there right now. And as we zoom in towards uh, Douglas County, again, quick shower, wipe it off. Things dry up. You can see we have this one shower moving right now towards the city of Roseburg. Now, what's the deal with tomorrow? I think you're... Thursday will be very similar to what we saw today. More pop up showers. Here's tomorrow afternoon. Lots of clouds. Maybe the sun comes out for 20, 30, 40 minutes. That's pretty much it. Uh, going into Thursday night, the clouds, the showers continue. And then as we go towards uh, Friday morning, we're still tracking the possibility of some showers and then a little bit of snow and rain mixing in here across parts of the Cascades on Friday. Man, it will be a chilly one out there tonight. Be ready for this because we had 80 degrees yesterday. Now we're back down to the 30s as we go towards tonight. And then for tomorrow, we're looking at the lower 50s as we head into the afternoon hours. As we get a look here at the next seven days, high pressure is back for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. And with that will come some warmer temperatures by early next week. Even in the Umpqua Basin, I think we're eyeballing 70, maybe above 70 a week out from today. Uh, but before that, we got some cold and dreary weather to get through beforehand. Cascade passes, I think we pick up a quick inch or two of snow tomorrow, uh, and then that's pretty much it. Nighttime lows, though, getting pretty chilly up there. And then here at home, we're looking at a 50-50 shot this weekend, Saturday being the wetter of the two days. Sunday right now it looks like the drier of the two days. Obviously different regions, but when you're looking at overnight lows, that cold and then knowing how warm we were yesterday, it's Pretty crazy. Yeah, definitely. Very nice stuff. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dylan. Looking ahead, millions of Americans are expected to travel to see the total solar eclipse on Monday. AAA says don't try and watch the eclipse while driving. Keep your headlights on. Don't wear eclipse glasses when driving. 